From ominous alleyways filled with fascinating history and timeless hauntings, to massive bridges holding spaces once hidden in plain sight where the ghosts of those long deceased are rumored to roam, Auld Reekie is not only the capital of Scotland, but also a capital amongst the paranormal community everywhere. A place where ancient spirits, old curses, and dark secrets still lie buried beneath the earth, waiting for the poor soul who one day uncovers them. Are you ready for the speakeasy's list of picks for the most haunted places in Edinburgh? Number 5. The Edinburgh Playhouse the Edinburgh Playhouse is a former variety theater located off Greenside Place that now mainly hosts touring musicals, live concerts, and other odds and ends. It boasts an impressive capacity of 3,059, making it one of the UK's largest working, non-sporting theaters in terms of raw audience capabilities. The theater was originally opened on the 12th of August, 1929 as a super cinema, modeled after the Roxy in New York and several other other inspirations, it sported a full stage, cafe, and comfortable accommodations. The property was owned by John Patrick Maguire, with the building itself designed by specialist cinema architect John Fairweather, who was famous for his part in the creation of Green's Playhouse out of Glasgow. Tragically, after years of punishment at the hands of time, alongside several sharp business declines, the Playhouse closed its doors on the 23rd of November, 1973. Shortly after its closure, it was set for demolition. These demolition plans were thwarted, however, by a freshly formed Save the Playhouse campaign, and listed building status was granted in 1974. The Playhouse was reopened as a theater in 1980, utilizing itself as a place for concerts, comedy shows, and operas. Following Following extensive refurbishments courtesy of Apollo Leisure in 1993, the Edinburgh Playhouse has been fully restored to its former glory and continues to thrive into present times. Over its impressive lifespan, a number of stories and urban legends from staff members, workmen, and countless patrons have emerged, most detailing encounters with chilling phenomena. One of the most famous apparitions encountered here is the spirit of a man in gray overalls, dubbed Albert. It's said that Albert most commonly appears on level 6 and is usually followed by a sudden and unnatural chill. Some claim he's the spirit of a stage hand killed in an accident, while others a night watchman who committed suicide on the job. Albert's bar on the foyer level is named in remembrance of him. A good majority of the hauntings on the property are blamed on Albert. When staff play music Albert doesn't like, he interferes. Or if something is being prepared that he doesn't approve of, he'll find some way to mess it up. Pulling wires, changing stations, or throwing CDs or tapes violently across the room. On several occasions, those alone or in limited numbers have experienced such extreme activity they've resorted to calling the authorities, who always arrive to find the building empty and nothing out of place. Several have reported canine units reacting strangely to the sixth floor. Also reported across the premises are the sounds of old-fashioned keys jingling, fastened locks turning on their own, and strange knocking sounds. Not related to Albert, a spectral orchestra has been sighted on stage in the middle of the night, and many report the feeling of someone playfully grabbing their shoulder or tapping them on the back. Number 4. The Real Mary King's Close the Real Mary King's Close is a historic close or alleyway-like cluster of structures located under buildings on the Royal Mile in historic Old Town Edinburgh that was named after a woman, or, more specifically, a merchant burgess who resided there through the 17th century. As history has it, this close, named after none other than one Mary King, who lived in the area from around 1635 and onwards, would grow to become a sort of mecca for traders of the era, a place where all social classes could meet and benefit. Unfortunately, the closest close quarters weren't exactly up to code when the bubonic plague swept Edinburgh, the worst wave of which hit in 1645. Medical professionals of the time scrambled before realizing a large part of the danger lived within rats, who in turn carried fleas with the Yersinia pestis bacterium. 
Mary King's Close was hit hard and, for a time, completely quarantined. By 1750, Mary King's Close had joined other closes in a state of dilapidation and decay, and due to political unrest and overcrowding, it became an overall dodgy and undesirable place. In an effort to quell or cover up the problem, portions of the neighborhood were destroyed entirely, while others were converted and sealed to form parts of the Royal Exchange's structure, which was completed in 1753. The remaining end was leveled to make way for Cockburn Street in 1853. From its demolition, covering, and up into recent times, a number of tales surrounding Mary King's Close have formed and been passed down through generations. That its space was actually used as a secret site for murder, devil worship, and plots against humanity, or that restless ghosts and darker things now roam the once thriving center, now buried. The Close offers guided tours filled with live actors to bring a whole new level of realism to any interested, and according to local legend, that's not all it offers. A number of stories of the paranormal have emerged over the years, including those of disembodied footsteps, extreme and unnatural cold spots, stones seen and heard thrown from shadow areas, and even ghostly, and by some accounts, demonic figures captured in the backgrounds of photos and videos. Even without haunting, some of the closes winding tunnels and pitch black rooms are terrifying enough. Several stories tell that residents were locked inside several spaces during various outbreaks, and that those infected were left to die. Following the plague, after life began seeping back into the close, stories of a woman in all black began, many claiming she was a restless, spiritual accumulation of all the area's many victims. In one room, a doll can be found. It's said this doll was brought by a psychic in an attempt to calm the spirit of a little girl named Annie. Since the doll was purchased and Annie brought into the public eye, a number of new toys, jewelry pieces, and other gifts have turned up, courtesy of fans. Several first responders have even left their badges for Annie as a sign of respect. Lastly, one disturbing tale tells of a strange scratching noise coming from several chimneys in the area, as well as from dark or concealed places. Those who have tried to reach their hands toward the scratching noise have been left with brutal slashes. This scratching has continued from the same places for years, through all seasons, day and night, and with no signs of animal life ever being discovered. Number 3. Greyfriars Kirkyard Greyfriars Kirkyard is a graveyard surrounding the Greyfriars Kirk at the southern edge of Old Town, Edinburgh, and sitting adjacent to George Harriet's school that has been interring bodies since the late 16th century. It holds the remains of a number of prominent and historic Edinburgh residents from the city's long past. The burying grounds themselves were officially founded in 1562, after royal sanction was granted in order to replace the churchyard at St. Giles Cathedral. This new yard would take its name from a Franciscan friar that dissolved earlier in 1560. Greyfriars Kirkyard was involved in the history of the Covenanters, with the covenanting movement and the signing of the National Covenant actually occurring at Greyfriars Kirk on the 28th of February in 1638. Following the fall of the militant Covenanters at Bothwell Brig in 1679, around 1,200 Covenanters were imprisoned in a field to the south of the churchyard, where, in the 18th century, a vaulted tomb dubbed the Covenanters' prison was constructed to hold their perished. Through the early days of photography, Greyfriars Kirkyard was utilized by David Octavius Hill and Robert Adamson as a setting for several portraits, tableaus, and other works such as the artist and the gravedigger. Today, the Kirkyard holds what many consider some of Scotland's finest mural works, monuments, statues, and art, many of which touch on the subjects of mortality as well as, interestingly enough, immortality. Several examples of these works are Death's Head, Angel of Resurrection, and the King of Terrors. The yard remains open to this day, with tours readily available. From both officials and countless guests, a number of terrifying tales of the supernatural have emerged. This isn't surprising as, for a time, grave robbers commonly stole bodies from the cemetery to resell to medical schools for experiments. That's pretty much the most disturbed one can get after death. These restless spirits, spanning several eras and fitting varying descriptions, have been sighted storming around the area in a rage, left forever seeking their bones. 
One of the Kirkyard's most famous ghosts is said to be that of George Mackenzie, sometimes referred to by his nickname from life, Bloody Mackenzie, or his nickname from the afterlife, the Mackenzie Poltergeist. George was known as a ruthless persecutor of Scottish Covenanters and was responsible for the deaths of over 18,000 Scots. When he died in 1691, his body was interned in a black mausoleum, sealed to hold his spirit, which was said to be just as aggressive, violent, and ruthless as he was in life. Rather perturbingly, it's said that his spirit was freed from the tomb in the 1990s when a homeless man broke in, looking for a place to sleep. Activity attributed to George has been known to get dangerous at times, so if you suspect you might be in the presence of the Mackenzie poltergeist, get out before someone gets hurt. The spirits of the Covenanters who perished on site, which was around 843, are sighted often and have also been known to get dangerous, many who visit their tomb emerging with scratches, bruises, or burns. Between the prison and cemetery, there have been 450 documented attacks and over 140 individuals have collapsed, many suspect because of the power of the Mackenzie poltergeist. Several even suspect this malicious entity and the untimely death of a local site Kick. Lastly, dubbed Greyfriars Bobby, a bronze dog statue represents a canine who stood faithfully at his owner's grave until his own death and was in turn buried with his beloved master. A tale bearing striking similarities to America's Stiffy Green out of Indiana, Bobby has been known to chase those wishing to do the cemetery harm with a ferocious growl and, on occasion, has been sighted with his master, both seemingly at peace as they wander the grounds. Number 2. The Edinburgh Vaults The Edinburgh Vaults, or Southbridge Vaults, located within the 19 arches of the South Bridge, are a series of chambers that, historically, played home to a number of taverns, tradesmen, and specialty shops. The South Bridge, which closes the gap between High Street and Chambers Street, was constructed between 1785 and 1788. For around the first 30 years or so of their existence, the vaults were used to house workshops and storage space for nearby businesses. Unfortunately, these vaults weren't appropriately weatherproofed, and light flooding as well as water retention on the bottom levels forced shopkeepers to start abandoning their spaces. As conditions in the vaults continued to deteriorate, by 1795 most of its businesses had moved out to seek more hospitable accommodations. By the 1820s, the old vaults had fallen into use by the city's shadier characters, as well as its homeless population. They were utilized for illegal gambling taverns, distilleries, body snatcher drops, and some claim worse. Eventually, the state of the vaults deteriorated to the point that even criminals and the derelict were forced to abandon them. Some Sometime between 1835 and 1875, the vaults were filled with rubble and sealed up entirely. They were rediscovered by former Scottish rugby internationalist Nori Rowan when he found a tunnel in the 1980s. He and his son Norman would later excavate the vaults through the 1990s, moving all manner of rubble to discover a series of fascinating artifacts along the way. Today, some of the vaults have been refurbished and converted for modern use as restaurants, shops, and venues, while most others remain sealed, forming tunnels within South Bridge that are mainly used for ghost tours. For the really brave, there are even opportunities to stay the night, with provided equipment to record any abnormal activity. And as many accounts have it, said activity is plentiful. Many visiting the Edinburgh vaults report orbs or ghostly images captured in the backgrounds of photographs, strange wisps of smoke or fog seen by the naked eye, floating with seeming cognition, and the smell of ale and old-timey foods when none are present. One famous legend tells of a dreadful curse. As the story goes, the wife of a well-respected city judge was supposed to be the first to cross the bridge when it was brand new. She died days before the bridge opened and was carried across instead in her coffin. Several claim this caused her spirit's restlessness, resulting in a series of bad incidents and supernatural experiences. Her spirit has been known to appear at times, a sad look on her face. Some say as she forever yearns for just a bit more life. A number of stories tell of the various individuals who inhabited the vaults, many of whom perished within by everything from natural causes or accidents to disease and murder. Also reported throughout the vaults are strange gusts of cold air, the feeling of being gripped and even scratched by clawed hands, the feeling of being constantly watched and followed by someone 
or something unseen. Lastly, disembodied sounds are commonly heard, those of children playing, conversations long lost to time, of strange screams, music, and noises of work, as if the past is playing out right where it occurred centuries past, just out of view from the living. Number 1. Edinburgh Castle Edinburgh Castle is a historic fortress that powerfully pierces the Edinburgh skyline from its prestigious perch atop Castle Rock. It boasts the title of being one of the oldest fortified places in all of Europe, and its chapel, St. Margaret's, the oldest surviving building in Edinburgh. The site at where the castle now sits has been occupied, as far as we can tell, since the second century at the very least, with a royal castle officially established in the 11th century, though it had already been serving as a royal residence for centuries prior. The chapel was constructed under the rule of King David I in honor of his mother, Queen Margaret, later Saint Margaret, who passed in 1093. The Great Hall was completed in 1511 for King James IV, who was killed in the Battle of Flodden two years following in 1513, while fighting against English forces sent by his brother-in-law, King Henry VIII of England. In 1566, Mary, Queen of Scots, gave birth to James VI in the palace. This tiny bit of new life would go on to become King of Scotland at just 13 months old, and would, later in life, unite the crowns of Scotland and England in 1603. Following the unification of the crowns, Edinburgh Castle was no longer used as a royal residence, and took its place as a military base and barracks. Its first prisoners of war, several French privateers, were captured in 1758, shortly after the start of the Seven Years' War. A hole is still visible today, where in 1811, 49 French prisoners dug desperately for freedom. All but one would get away. This fascinating fort's history, heritage, and prestige were brought to prominence at the beginning of the 19th century, and restoration efforts were soon to follow, as interested parties raced to save what was left of the original structure. In 2014, it was discovered that the castle had been dealt at least 26 sieges throughout history, making it, get this, the most besieged place in all of Great Britain, and one of the most attacked in the world. Today, portions of the castle are open to the public for tours, while others, interestingly enough, are still under military use. This next part really shouldn't be any surprise, as Edinburgh Castle has been featured in a ridiculous number of paranormal television productions, blogs, documentaries, top tens or fives lists, magazines, publications, and more. But over the years, a ridiculous amount of otherworldly activity has been reported from the grounds, ranging from harmless to downright terrifying. Since its construction, Edinburgh Castle has experienced attacks, executions, captures, and a host of additional and equally devastating events. The dungeons are said to have seen some of the worst, and as such, are the most haunted area of the castle. Some of its more famous prisoners include Alexander Stewart of Albany, who managed to escape, stabbing his guards to death and burning their bodies, Lady Janet Douglas of Glamis, who was accused of witchcraft and burned at the stake, and an unnamed piper who is said to have wandered down one of the castle's underground passages, never to return. The ghosts of these prisoners and more have been sighted all throughout the dungeon as well as across castle grounds. In 2001, one of the largest paranormal investigations in history was hosted at the castle and involved nine researchers as well as more than 200 public volunteers who explored its expanse armed with all manner of equipment. Though the public volunteers were not informed as to which areas of the castle were reportedly haunted, 51% experienced happenings in the purportedly haunted areas, while only 35% experienced occurrences in lesser-mentioned locations, which, if we're being being honest could still be haunted with Edinburgh's brutal history. Reported all across the grounds are shadowy figures seen darting about, extreme and unnatural cold spots, various full-bodied apparitions from the castle's many eras, and a spectral dog that has been sighted roaming, namely at night. Orbs and strange lights often appear in the backgrounds of photographs, and a strange green blob has been known to manifest in pictures and other recordings. Another famous and commonly cited specter from Edinburgh's past is said to be that of a headless drummer boy, who was first spotted before Oliver Cromwell attacked the castle in 1650. 
The sound of him playing his drum has been heard coming from the battlements. When his apparition appears, it's said to be an omen for looming danger. Lastly, and confined in no area in particular, are reports of the feeling of being consistently watched, the sensation of being touched, and even burns discovered on several, usually on the arms. With its overwhelmingly brutal history and a list of hauntings and activity almost too long and frequent to believe, Edinburgh Castle was an easy one as our pick for the most haunted place in, where else, but Edinburgh. Thanks for tuning in to our list of picks for the most haunted places in Edinburgh, Scotland. If you enjoyed hearing our histories and stories as much as we enjoyed telling them to you, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn notifications on so you know when fresh content is coming out. Swing by our Facebook page at facebook.com backslash the real speakeasy. That's all lowercase, no spaces, just how you see it on the screen. Throw us a like if you feel we deserve it, and most importantly, share this video and our channel with anyone you think could use a good scare. We'll see you all next time.